Welcome to our five-part video series on sustainable design using cold form steel. This module will outline the benefits of resource use and durability of steel products when designing sustainable buildings. View the other modules in the series for more information on sheet steel building products and sustainability. This module will cover durability, embodied energy, comparisons of different structures, prefabrication, reuse and recycling, the steel life cycle, waste minimization, adaptability and flexibility, regional materials, and transport. Durability enables a material or component to perform its function over a long period of time. But when a building component or material requires maintenance or replacement, those actions can also impact other environmental aspects. So increased durability of a component can actually help reduce the overall environmental impact of the building. Despite this fact, the long-term environmental considerations of using durable components and the resultant cost savings are often ignored by building owners that are unwilling or unable to increase their initial capital costs despite the potential for future financial benefits. Additionally, the life cycle of durable materials and components such as steel beams and columns can often be extended by reusing them in another building. LEED Regional Priority Credit 1 requires the development of a durability plan based on CSA S478 guideline on durable buildings. That in turn requires that the design team demonstrates how a building's predicted service life will exceed the design service life and how component assemblies with shorter lifespans than the building can be replaced easily. Newspaper headlines that describe embodied energy of building materials in terms of the gigajoule per ton are overly simplistic, rendering them virtually meaningless. Therefore, it is important to look further and compare whole systems or buildings to account for the embodied energy at the scale of the component or building. Accordingly, progressive manufacturers and suppliers are beginning to make data on embodied energy and the resulting emissions available to building designers. On the surface, steel has a higher embodied energy per ton than concrete or timber. However, when compared on a like-for-like -like basis, such as with a building structure, there is often little, if any, difference. Issues such as recycling and reuse complicate calculations of embodied energy. Factoring in the high recycled content of cold form steel reduces the embodied energy and resulting carbon and other emissions considerably. Although steel embodies more energy per unit of mass than other structural materials, its high strength to weight ratio means considerably less volume of material is required for the structure of a building, which also reduces the environmental impacts of transportation. A life cycle study comparing a four and eight story office building shows little significant difference between the embodied energy values for five alternate types of steel and concrete structures. This suggests that comparisons of whole commercial buildings on a floor area based on the materials chosen for the structural frame has little significance on the energy use over its lifetime. Two specific cold form steel products, lightweight steel framing and steel building systems, are ideal for prefabrication in a factory prior to it being shipped to the job site. And, although there are some differences between these product types, both offer many of the same benefits. Prefabrication and panelization of lightweight steel framing when entire wall and floor sections are preassembled and delivered to the site ready to install offer increased efficiency. The benefits of this method are lightweight structures, finishes can be applied in the factory, services can be partially installed before delivery to the site, and the ability to pre-clad components prior to delivery. With steel building systems, structural steel, cladding components, and related accessories are engineered to perform as an integrated system. Benefits of steel building systems include manufacturing heavier primary and secondary framing members in a quality controlled factory, in-house precision engineering, infinite layout, cladding, and finishing options available. Prefabrication, panelization, and steel building systems also offer considerable potential for sustainability benefits, including 
reduce site impacts. Spending less time on site reduces disruptions from site deliveries while decreasing noise and pollution. These methods also require smaller foundations, less excavation, less waste soil removal, and less concrete in the ground. Fewer defects. Site conditions are not conducive to quality workmanship. Factory conditions provide better working conditions and a more durable building, as well as improving quality control, supervision, and checking procedures. They also foster more efficient design refinement, prototyping and testing of services, and fewer callbacks to correct defects. Waste reduction. Factory management offers better control of waste streams. Designers can maximize efficiency regarding use of materials while reducing material damage. Sound purchasing policies can reduce overordering, and materials are more likely to be recycled for less waste on site. Health and safety. Site work can be dangerous, whereas healthy, comfortable working conditions in factories are much easier to maintain. High performance. In factories, such things as thermal and acoustic performance, fire control, and service installations are easier to manage, resulting in higher, more consistent quality. The reuse and recycling of previously used materials and components reduces the need for primary steel. Increasingly, designers are sourcing recovered steel components and specifying their use in new projects. When doing so, designers can expect the material will be recycled or reused at the end of its useful life. Many steel components recovered from refurbishments or demolition sites are suitable for reuse, including structural sections, cladding, studs, and smaller components. One of the great environmental advantages of steel is its recycled content. Unlike other materials, the infrastructure for steel recycling is well established and its magnetic qualities make it easy to extract from the waste stream. Moreover, steel can be recycled indefinitely with no loss in quality. A piece of steel could be a can, then a car part, and then a beam in a building and be continually recycled. Steel recycling processes provide a reliable product with no contamination or performance deterioration, so it is fully recycled in the truest sense. LEED credits materials and resources 3 and 4 focused on reusing and recycling to reduce market demands for virgin steel while decreasing waste are calculated based on the value of the material. The Recycled Content Credit aims to increase demand for building materials such as steel that incorporate recycled content. CFS components can contribute significantly to achieving this lead credit. In Canada, one point is available if the sum of the post-consumer recycled content plus one half of the post-industrial recycled content constitutes at least 10% of the total value of the material you use for a project. An additional point is available if these proportions are doubled. Two methods are used to produce steel. Either a basic oxygen furnace, which typically uses about 25% scrap steel, or an electric arc furnace, which uses nearly 100% scrap. LEED certification requires documentation from the steel suppliers to verify the recycled content and manufacturing process used. In some cases, the value of a building steel frame may itself be sufficient to account for the required value of materials in achieving this credit. The construction industry must rethink how buildings are constructed and assembled and develop new strategies that maximize reuse and recycling. And they must establish best practices to optimize the use and value of components at the end of their life cycles, along with the prudent uses of resources acquired from demolition to reduce what ends up in landfills. Sound planning at the design stage is key because the way a building was originally put together greatly affects the ease with which its components can be recovered at the end of its life cycle. The use of steel structures and other steel components contributes significantly to reducing waste on site. As evident in this chart, metals in general account for a very small proportion of on-site waste. Moreover, CFS components are generally manufactured to tight factory tolerances which minimizes waste and any steel offcuts that do occur can easily be recycled. 
Lead Construction Waste Management Credit, MR Credit 2, addresses the huge volume of construction waste generated on site, and one or two points are available for diverting 50% or 75% respectively of the weight of construction, demolition, and land clearing debris from disposal in landfills. Recycling or reusing all CFS components from demolition sites will generate significant benefit for this credit. Adaptability is defined as a building's potential to adapt over time to successfully conform to future requirements. CFS helps achieve adaptability by strengthening a structure in certain locations to allow for increased loads, facilitating attachments and extensions to the original structure either on plan or elevation, offering flexible cladding systems that accommodate change, inserting lightweight mezzanine floors or new floors behind existing facades, employing demountable partitions to allow future layout changes, and creating accessible service zones. The Building Reuse Credit aims to extend the life cycle of existing building stock, conserve resources, retain cultural resources, reduce waste, and reduce environmental impacts of new buildings as they relate to materials manufacturing and transport. Following is a series of strategies gleaned from technical studies to help make buildings more adaptable. Optimize structural grids that allow for changing uses of space and use simple structural grids with clear support lines. Allow redundancy to accommodate additions and building changes. Over-designed structural capacity may allow alternative uses and options to extend the structure. Using separate structure and cladding allows independent alteration and replacement. Separate services into clearly accessible locations to allow for easy changes and upgrades. Raised floors may also permit easier upgrades of services. Loose fits will add redundancy for easier accommodation of future additions and changes. Increased floor to ceiling heights. Offices require greater ceiling heights than residential buildings. Integrate finishes that facilitate easy upgrades or replacement without presenting difficulty in accessing other components. To accommodate future change, keep designs simple. Independent systems allow changes where necessary. Strong interdependence reduces the allowable scope of changes. Provide sufficient space for the dismantling, renovation, or addition of new machinery. Avoid irreversible processes. Reversible mechanical fixings, such as bolts and screws, can usually be removed, whereas adhesives, welding, and cement often cannot. Avoid complex composite materials that are difficult to separate, including treatments and finishes applied on site. Incorporate each component so it can easily be removed and recycled when obsolete. The deconstruction process separates a building into components so they can be more readily reused or recycled. This minimizes the destructive aspects of the processes used by preserving components and materials. Some steel buildings are already partially deconstructed when structural steel components, such as wild flange beams, are removed undamaged and used as is in a new project. Other steel buildings are often completely deconstructed and rebuilt elsewhere. If extracted undamaged, steel components such as cladding and staircases may be reused. Ease of deconstruction is affected by the systems and technologies used to construct it and the availability of relevant documentation. Careful consideration during the design process will facilitate increased reuse of structural steel components at the end of the building's useful life. The lead credit for regional materials is earned by increasing locally manufactured materials, which reduces the environmental impacts of transportation while supporting the local economy. To achieve one point, 20% of materials measured by value must be extracted, processed, and manufactured within 800 kilometers of the manufacturer. Or, if rail or water transport is used primarily, this distance is extended to 2,400 kilometers. For a second point, 30% of materials must meet this requirement. 
For salvage steel, this will likely refer to where the material last served a useful purpose. As such, locally salvaged steel would contribute to this credit. Sheet steel products can contribute to the materials and resource and regional priority credits for Lead Canada NC. Building Reuse Credit 1. CFS components are flexible and adaptable. A steel building can be redesigned to adapt to new uses and layouts, allowing more of it to be reused rather than demolished. Construction Waste Management Credit 2. Prefabrication and factory work with CFS components helps control the waste stream. Steel offcuts are valuable and the well-established steel recycling infrastructure makes it easy to recycle them, reducing the amount of waste on site. Also, the magnetic properties of steel make it more easily separated from the waste stream. Materials Reuse Credit 3. Many steel components that are recovered from demolition or refurbishment projects are suitable for reuse. Recycled Content Credit 4. Steel is the most recycled material in the world, more than aluminum, glass, and paper combined. The total recycled content of CFS components is 30 to 85 percent, which means using steel components contributes significantly to this credit. Regional Materials Credit 5. The steel recycling infrastructure is well established and spans the country. Locally salvaged steel also contributes towards this credit. Durable Building Credit 8. CFS components and assemblies are coated with durable galvanized or galvalume, which contributes to a durability plan based on CSA S478. Components and assemblies can be designed with long-term service lives. Need more information on using cold form steel in sustainable design? Watch the other four modules in this series, Explore our website at cssbi.ca or call us at 519-650-1285.